Round one, who would you like to fight from a different era? I'd like to have um, had a go at either Chris Eubank or, or Nigel Benn, just because that would have put me in, the, in that British mix. Probably Nigel Benn, because um, you can never count him out. And he, I reckon that's, no one had an easy night's fight against him, so I'd love to have tested myself against Nigel Benn. Marvellous Marvin Hagler. Great fighter, tough, strong, come forward, aggressive. I'd like to box him at range for a few rounds and then mix it up for a few rounds. I think that'd be a very, very entertaining fight. Where would that dream fight take place? Nottingham Forest, city ground. To me, that'd be better and bigger than fighting in somewhere like Las Vegas, because it means so much to me, being home. I've always wanted to box at Caesars Palace. Outside of Caesars Palace, I don't think they have boxing there anymore. So that would have been cool. And how would that dream fight have finished? Hopefully not me being stretched out. I'm not sure, I'd, I'd like to think I would have, I'd have sussed him out at some point. I think it'd go the distance, because very, very tough, strong fighters, both of us, and it'd be, um, be a point decision to, I can't pick a winner. I'm not going to be biased, I can't pick a winner. Round four, what do you remember about your first pro fight? I remember it was against Michael Pinnock from Birmingham, very tough, strong fighter who, who very rarely got got stopped at the York or Bethnal Green, great occasion in that venue. The whole event for my pro debut was fantastic. It was on BBC and um, it was quite a new era for boxing. I can remember the whole excitement and the buzz around the whole fight. And it was March 2002. I remember that it was at the O2 Arena and um, I decided to get the train and I liked to go on my own. Well, back then I could get away with it because no one sort of half recognised me, especially not on fight night. Um, but there was a problem with the Jubilee line and I got there literally 20 minutes before I was supposed to ring walk and um, the motors were going bad. So I was like, we're going to put you on last. I said, definitely don't put me on last. So it will be sweeping up. So I managed to quickly do my bandages. Um, I was already warm from Russian and then we just jumped in the ring. Round five, when did you win your first major title? Commonwealth title. That was on the undercard of um, David Hay and John Ruiz, I think. It was against Charles Adamu, who's a uh, was, um, was, was beaten but uh, had never been stopped at the time and I was the first guy to stop him. 2005 maybe, Commonwealth title against Charles Adalma. Great 12 round fight, bit of a grueler. Round six, when did you last cry? I'm not really one for crying, I think like my wife says I'm like a serial killer sometimes, I'm that emotionless and I think um, the best way to be in boxing is to not let emotion get uh, dragged in. I'd say I've probably cried within the last couple of years but I genuinely can't remember. When my son Rocco was born, barbaric, brutal, primitive experience childbirth and um, the relief when you've got your baby boy in your hands, the emotion, you can't, you can't help it. You're not human if you don't shed a tear when you have your first kid. Round seven, what celeb would you like most in your corner? Robert McCracken, MDE, he's a celebrity in it. I wouldn't want anyone else other than Robert McCracken in my corner. I want a silly celebrity thinking he knows what he's doing. I'd like Ray Liotta in my corner, I think. He looks pretty menacing, and I think, imagine him sort of giving you the pep talk, it would pump you up. Round eight, who has hit you the hardest? Robin Reed caught me with a peach of an overhand right, and he stepped in with it, and it crunched straight on the chin. And um, I remember walking back to my corner, and sort of swaying on the way back, thinking, oh, blood the bell went. Probably David Hay, to be fair. I've sparred a lot of heavyweights over the years, many of his, his uh, sparring partners but none of them have been as quick and um, vicious as he has, so he's probably, probably one of the hardest punches I've took, yeah. Round nine, what annoys you most? Probably doing interviews like this close to, um, close to a big fight. The little things that, that bother me on my day-to-day. -day. I, think, I think traffic's probably, probably worse for me. I'm not, I'm not a very good commuter at the best of times, but um, traffic always seems pointless, especially when you get to that point of traffic and it opens up and there's no, re no logical reason. Round ten, what danger does your opponent pose? Um, I think all opponents pose the same dangers, you know, they're trying to hit you with hard shots and, you know, you wear little 10 ounce gloves and every now and again if you get caught it hurts. So I don't think Georgie Boy poses any more danger than any of my previous opponents. His confidence is probably, um, confidence slash ignorance is pretty, pretty, you know, something to worry about right now because he, he's supremely confident and a confident guy is much harder to beat than a, a guy who's doubting himself. It's up to me to make him doubt himself. How and when will the fight finish? I think the fight will finish as soon as I connect with the right hand because I know that his struggles were to hold a shot and you can't do anything in training to, to condition the ability to take a punch. 
you know, it's a neurological disposition if you like. You get it on the chin and you fall over. It either happens or it doesn't. So I think as soon as I connect, the fight's over. Simple as that. Could be round one, could be round six, could be round 12. The fight will finish before the final bell, that's what I'm going to say, and it will finish with, with me, KO and Carl Farage. Spoke from the final round, so you've won. What next? Well, it'll be Christmas. I'll try and do my best to enjoy it. Um, I'll be, I'll, you know, if all goes to plan, I'll be world champion, and uh, then I'll seem to make some serious decisions on my career. Um, there's loads of great fighters out there for me to to mix with, uh, we'll see who comes forward and see which is the next logical fight. But um, if uh, all goes well, fighting in front of a sellout crowd in Manchester on Sky Pay Per View, if I perform how I know I can perform, then hopefully this is me arriving and you know, on to bigger and better things. I was talking to Eddie last week about potentially what they call a super fight. No, a super fight's going to have to be somebody internationally like Gennady Golovkin or Chavez Jr. Maybe, maybe not a rematch with Andre Ward, but that sort of fight, and it'll probably be over in America, unless we can get it at the city ground, we'll probably get that Vegas fight.